What is up, River family? It is Wednesday, which means it's our Wednesday Bible study. Here's why we do this. We want to grow together right where we are. So we hope that this encourages you. We hope it inspires you. So let's dive into his word. What is up, everybody? It's Wednesday morning Bible study. Oh. <laughs> I was like, no theme song this time. Hey, if you, whether you're joining us live, watch us later, or listening to us on our podcast, we're excited that you're here with us because our goal is to grow together right where we are. I'm here with our worship pastor, Brayden. Good morning, church. And our youth pastor, Naomi. Hello. Right? We have, a, we have an exciting text. If this is your first time, we've been journeying through the book of Mark. I think next time we're going to go through the book of Ephesians. Like, uh, I really want to do Ephesians That'd be a good next. Time. That would be a, a, a swell swell moment that would be a long podcast that would be like an hour paul's letters yeah just be ready for like three verses at a time um <laughs> yeah. real quick real brief announcement next week we won't have the bible study uh yeah uh alexis and i will be on a little mini vacation we'll be suffering for the lord on a beach so Sorry. pray for us pray for us but um if you got a bible open it up to mark chapter 14 we're ever closer to the cross like we're yeah. even closer to the death the burial the resurrection uh, we're going to skip verses 1 and 2. It's simply um, that the scribes and the chief priests are trying to plot. They just don't want to kill Jesus during a festival. And uh, so, I mean, that, that's actually, you know, the, the beauty of like just reading that is some people read the Bible and they think that every verse has something to interpret or like there's some kind of hidden message or, or revelation inside of it. Um, the beauty of, of narratives, like what we're reading, is some some verses are just telling the story. So, so uh, ver- yeah, huh? so they give you the setting. That's it. That's yeah. it. So verses one and two kind of just tell the story. Nothing to interpret there. So let's read in verse three. While he was in Bethany at, at the house of Simon the leper, uh, uh, it's cool that Simon the leper makes the Bible. Who is Simon the leper? Uh, he's probably somebody that Jesus healed at some point that was common among the disciples, right? Uh, so he's at Simon's house. He says, as he was reclining at the table, a woman with an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume, uh, came with a with an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume and a pure nard, right? She broke the jar and poured it on his head. Uh, some were expressing indignation to another. Why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they began to scold her. Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a noble thing for me. Other translations say good. Others say beautiful. It says you always have the poor with you and you can do what is good for them whenever you want. But you do not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body in advance for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. And when they heard this, they were glad and promised to give him, give him money. So he started looking for a good opportunity to betray him. All right, so it's getting real. Like, we all know that Judas is the dude, right? Last yeah. Supper, everybody's trying to figure out who it is. Well, Judas is already in the works. But uh, you have this really uh, amazing scene of this woman coming in and anointing Jesus and, and stuff. So what are you guys seeing with all of this? Um, I mean, the first thing I noticed is that, uh, I mean, she obviously comes with, with one, of, one, of, one of her best, if you will, um, to give to Jesus. I think she's one of the only ones that actually has somewhat of an idea of what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the sermon that I heard on this was talking about how she worshiped him, how she was bringing you know, her best to the table um, while others were judging her. Um, oh, that's really good. Yeah. And it talked about, uh, the sermon talked about how, you know, how we judge other people for their worship. You know, uh, so that's something that, that kind of stuck out to me uh, at the beginning when I read it. Uh, was just, you know, are you judging other people for the way they're worshiping? Um, and should you be focused on that? Yeah, and especially if you're not bringing your best. Right? It's like you hear, why and why are you focused on that? Yeah, that's good. That's, yeah, I, I've never. I, I'll be honest. I didn't think about it from that perspective, but that's a that's a phenomenal. Uh, viewpoint uh, on this, and in and this then, this scenario, it's Judas getting mad. So yeah. we talked earlier, like why why was he getting mad? That was one of his weaknesses, right? 
Yeah. You said Jesus put him over the money box. <laughs> yeah. money box. So if you didn't know that, yeah, one of the things that we were talking about was, uh, so Judas is obviously, Judas's big struggle was money. Um, and Jesus puts him over the money box as they travel. So, and so this woman, like, kind of breaking this down, brings something that is worth like 300 denarii. Um, that is a, a, a lot, like super expensive. In That's like a whole year's wage. Yeah. Like, for them. It's like, wor- yeah, imagine mm-hmm. working for a whole year, taking your salary, buying a jar of perfume, and then pouring it out over. I would never use that perfume. I just put it on like the top shelf of my closet <laughs> so it didn't break or Which something. Break the actual I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Case yeah. for it, you know. So, and Judas's complaint was, oh, well, we could have sold that for money. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, we could have gotten money, and then it's kind of interesting because he's like, and then we could have given it to the poor. And obviously, by looking at the end of this, Judas's idea wasn't money for the poor; it was like money for himself. Yeah, which that can go into a whole other conversation. But Naomi, what, right. talk to us about what you well, said. just like what you said about like just people like judging your like form of worship. It, worship to me is so like intimate and personal, and so like. Why does anybody else have an opinion, you know, about your worship? So, like, it is. It is so beautiful what she's doing. And so to have someone be so, like, indignant about such a personal and intimate thing. Because it's so relational. Like, you guys don't tell me how to love Dawson. And if you did, I'd be like, shut up. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> I've spent a lot of time with Dawson. Like, yeah. <laughs> and you can love Dawson the way you want to love Dawson. Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's just so personal. It's like. They had the audacity. <laughs> right. like, but, right. well, especially with Jesus in the room, you're like, wow. But think about wow. What a dream. Okay, so these guys have spent like every day probably for the last three and a half years with Jesus. And Mary, this is Mary, right? We, if you read this story, I think it's from John's perspective. It's Mary, the sister of Lazarus, yes. yeah. has seen Jesus periodically. So the ones that kind of threw a fit about her worship were maybe the ones that took for granted the fact that Jesus was with them all the time. Well, it, yeah. it, and now you have somebody who has who doesn't get to encounter him on a on a regular basis, and she gives it all. Like yeah. she comes and gives, and, and so taking about talking about judging worship, maybe we would be less judgmental in worship if we didn't take for granted the fact that we get the opportunity. Yeah, to. that's good. Yeah, that's good. And, that's a seven. And, and I def yeah. This is, <laughs> well, ironically, this like definitely in like a, the focus isn't worship; it's it's her praise, but. It, like the the image is the is the same. Like I think it's a very real conversation for us to have because it's. Uh, I think sometimes it, this is. I don't want this to be a rabbit trail, but I think sometimes that um, the biggest attack on Christians is other Christians. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, in how judgmental we are and how we live. Our, I mean, we're. Yeah. I, I think we're quite honestly the first Corinthian church. The word uh, church word is a real. One. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is yeah, from people that you would expect. Our our role responsibility is not to judge other people's worship, but to encourage them to continue to spur right. each other on. Right. Exactly. So, uh, Nomi, you said you love this text. What is it? About I do. This I really here? like this text because I can't get over like how beautiful this is, like what she's doing because it's so like. <sighs> I don't know what words to use because like the way she really just intimacy. Yeah, I guess. I don't know what word because the way she really just doesn't hold anything back. I mean, she like anoints his head and then she goes to his feet and uses her own hair. I mean, I know that was like a custom in their time to wash their feet, right? Because they're working, they're walking out on these like dirt paths and they're your feet are gross, like so. It was custom. They're to do old cruiser sandals. <laughs> <laughs> and so for her to like. Use your own hair, and ladies, like we care about what our hair looks like, and like we want our hair to be healthy and pretty. And so to think that she's using it to scrub this dude's feet, yeah. like that, and think how close her face is. I mean, unless this girl got long old hair, think how close she is to it, to his feet. You know, like that. Your face is pretty much all up in his tootsies, oh, like, <laughs> yeah. like, and so just the the desperation, the lack of care just the raw like oh jesus i just want to give you everything it doesn't nothing else matters i just want to like take care of you and love you and give you everything that i have like with no no regard to other people no holding back like i think it was just so and that's what he says oh, verse eight. that's what stuck out to me it says she has done what she could you know um and that was part of the one of the commentaries i was reading is like are you doing what you can for Jesus? 
Yeah. Well, okay, so let's ask the really question. Why? Why, like, uh, of all people, you know I mean, if anybody would have been known that the time was coming, it would have been the disciples. Jesus has already told them a couple times yeah. that, hey, like, my time's coming to an end. Why, like, why would this be such a powerful act for Mary? Which, if you study Mary, Mary's always found at the feet of Jesus. Like, if you, yeah. Lazarus, in, in, when they invited Jesus Martha to the home, yeah. Martha's always yeah. working. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Martha. Mar- uh, Mary's always at his feet. Um, and this, this is, like, really shortly after Lazarus was raised from the dead, right? Yeah, yeah, he raises, they tell him, um, they're like, hey, Lazarus is, you know, he's sick, we're gonna go back, and they're like, well, listen, if you go to Jerusalem, they're gonna kill you, and Thomas, that's where Thomas is like, well, if he's going back to die, we're going with you. you so know she's I mean? just coming off of that spiritual yeah. eye, if you will. But that's, okay, so you're, you're, you're barking, you're climbing the right tree. If anybody's familiar with death, and understanding yeah. death burial ritual rites, mm-hmm. or death yeah. burial practices it right. would be married yeah. so it knowing that jesus is is she it's like she's almost caught something that the disciples have failed to catch yeah that he really is the the the, the way the truth and the life that's where we find that text right or no he's the the life the the resurrection and the life is the i am statement associated with the lazarus story so she she's going in to anoint him because she believes he is who he says he is yeah yeah now, here, here's an interesting question. Uh, are the disciples wrong? The, like, think about this. Could she have sold that and given it to the poor? I'm like, yeah, I guess. Do you think that was their motive? No. But okay, but then, okay, look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. It says, you always have the poor within you and you do what's good for them, but you do not always have me. Um, is, exactly. Yeah, well, it, what's the contrast? Like, there's a contrast here. Right? They could have done this. And, and it's not that actually selling it and giving it to the poor is a bad thing. Like, we're called to take care of the... I think it's the wisdom of knowing what that was for at the time. Okay, that's good. That's a good perspective. So you, should a good be, you should be listening and thinking about, hey, should, you know, does God want me to give this to the poor? Or since Jesus is in the room right now, you mm-hmm. know, I'm going to annoy him. I'm going to worship him with this. I'm going to give this to him instead of to people. Mm-hmm. That that's that's really good. Um, one of the commentaries I read talked about the contrast isn't Jesus versus the poor, but it's always versus not always. Yeah. So so look at that again. You always have the poor with you, and you can do what is good for them whenever you want. Essentially, there's always going to be those that are struggling, those yeah. that don't have as much, and you can always take care of them. Yeah, like that's opportunities will always. Be yeah, there. The, the the problem of poor uh, and poverty may not disappear until the second coming. Like if we're going to be completely honest. Yeah. Um, governmental systems have been trying to figure that out. Uh, there's 501c3s, like nonprofits all over that are, are trying to do whatever they can. Right. In, in it. But it's a big, it's a very big problem. Jesus said it, you'll always have the poor. He said, but you do not always have me. So the, the problem isn't, it's not Jesus versus the poor. It's, it's like, a solution you can always serve people that are struggling with poverty but i'm not always going to be on the earth it kind of makes me think of a comment that i heard a mom make i think it was actually pastor caitlin where she was like and never feel bad for like just holding your baby even though there's dishes because there's always gonna be dishes to be done but your baby's not always a baby and so that's something i think about often i mean i don't have kids but you know one day but so i think about that like you want to like treasure the moments you have for now because you won't always have it and so it's like this girl, she really like maximized the time she had with Christ because you always got people. It's almost when to worship versus when to serve. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah, break that down. Break that down. It's really good. Uh, I mean, in this case, she could have given it to the poor, which would be serving. serving. Uh, but she chose to worship with what she had. Um, and just like in the church, sometimes I feel like we have to use our gifts to worship instead of to serve so that we can serve better. <laughs> Yeah, it's like ser- it. serving good. from worship instead of serving and then having nothing left for worship. Yeah, I really like that. So you got to fill yourself up, and then you can serve. All right, yeah. let's let's go. To, so we, the beautiful. I think we. we uh, this has been an amazing conversation on worship, um, and, and really sacrifice and surrender and acknowledgement, like honor. Um, but let's close with the last two verses. I think this is one of my. Uh, favorite. I like talking about God and money. I th- Jesus liked talking about God and money. Uh, mm-hmm. The the comparison that you see from from Jesus is you can't 
serve both God and money, you'll love one and despise the other, right? It's interesting that the comparison or the contrast isn't God and like yourself. It's you'll either serve God or yeah. the biggest obstacle was money. The reason that they did that, uh, religious leaders at the time and the, their, their teaching taught that if you had a lot of material wealth, you had more favor. So say material provision. That's what mm -hmm. money that's, offers. That's what it is. Yeah, well, it means God likes you more. If you have more, God likes you more, right? That's why the Pharisees were then the, the nicest role, yeah. all of this other stuff. So Judas uh, goes to the chief priest to betray Jesus. And here's the question. What did he betray him for? Money. So we're, or yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh, 30. Actually, it was the, the equivalent of the price of a slave. Or it was... Uh, what is it, Hosea and Gomer? It was mm -hmm. the same price that Hosea paid for Gomer. Mm -hmm. Wow. If you think about it. Yeah. You know, and that, that story is a parallel of God doing what he can to buy back the people he loves, right? The same situation. Uh, this is kind of the reverse. Well, no, it's somebody else paying Judas to turn in Jesus so that he could die for the people that he, that he loves. You know, uh, it's interesting I, I just think it's super interesting that um, it wasn't another uh, sin or another addiction. Like it wasn't like, like somebody that was all cracked out or yeah. like demon possessed. Right. You know what I mean? That betrayed him. It was Judas betrayed him for, for financial gain. You know what I mean? And, and the question is like how many times have we negated our faith because money may have been more important than and breaking so there's a contrast right the, the contrast is you have a woman who has a year's worth of wages and pours it all over Jesus and then you have a guy who wants more money and actually betrays Jesus for it so one worships Jesus with her money mm -hmm. with her possessions and the other betrays Jesus for more money yeah you know I mean in in, in our given circumstances what like what character do we play mm -hmm. you know That's good. well yeah Ah, it's, it's, I could go on a whole tangent. But anyways, is there anything else you guys want to add to today? It pretty much covers it. Yeah. I think, I, I think the big takeaway uh, for us is it goes along the lines. you you got to look at the beauty of the scene. Um, and it's, it's putting together what you both said um, is that she gave everything. You know what I mean, she in a moment when she realized time was running short, she worshiped God with all that she had, even to the point of using her hair to clean his feet. And I think we uh, live in a time period where we can worship God with all that we have. We may not be able to clean his feet with our hair, but we can still give him everything that we have. Yeah. So uh, that's this week's Bible study. Just a reminder, uh, we will not be up next week, but we will be back the following. I'm, I'm excited as we get closer to the cross. So uh, the reason we do this, we want to grow together right where we are. So uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Well, hey, that is our Wednesday Bible study. We just want to thank you so much again for joining us. And if you want to join us every week, if you'll click subscribe, this podcast will pop up right there for you. Again, we want to do this to grow together right where we are.